Welcome back, Math 30-1. In this lesson here, we're going to learn how to solve first-degree trigonomic equations. So just to start off, we're going to do a little review on how to solve simple trigonomic equations. Now, if I have sine x is equal to negative 1 half, and we're looking for the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, we automatically know my graph is talking about radians. So we want a solution in radians instead of degrees. Now, I'm going to start this off here by looking at my quadrants. So what quadrants is this graph talking about? Well we want when sine is negative. So when we're talking about negative sine that means my y value is negative. So it's going to be either in quadrant 4 or quadrant 3. Okay? So now I look at this, we're really looking at sine x, I'm finding my reference angle is equal to 1 over 2. Now if I want to find my reference angle when it's 1 half, that's going to be right here and it's my shortest sign and one, one half is my shortest for my y value so that's going to be the same as 30 degrees which is pi over 6. So my reference angle is equal to pi over 6. Okay? And now we want to know where it is between 0 and 2 pi. Well I look at this here we are pi over 6 more than pi. So I'm going to have to go pi over 6 plus pi, which is gives me 7 pi over 6 radians, and my other angle is pi over 6 short of pi, so that's going to be 2 pi subtract pi over 6, which will give me 11 pi over 6. So my two solutions are x can equal to 7 pi over 6 rads or 11 pi over 6 radians. All right, so now let's take a look at B. Here we have three secant x minus five is equal to zero. So the first step I'm going to do with this one is try and isolate my secant x. So I'm going to have here, I'm going to put secant three, secant of x is equal to five. All I did was add five to both sides. Now I'm going to get secant x is equal to five over three. Just divide both sides by three. Now. Looking at this, we normally don't use secant x, but we know secant x is the reciprocal of cos x. So if we look at cos x, this is the same as cos x is equal to 3 over 5. Now, we know cos is positive, so let's go back to my grid here and figure out where, which, which uh, areas my graph is going to be in. So we know cos is positive here in division 1 and here in quadrant Four. So we know we're quadrant one and quadrant four. Okay. So now we have to find my reference angle. Well, I know this is going to be in degrees. This one here is not one of the quick identities that we know. So I'm just going to grab my calculator, turn it on, make sure my mode is in degrees. Go over. Okay. And all I'm going to do is go second cos three divided by five, and I get 53 degrees. So I know my reference angle is equal to 53 degrees. Now, we, that's quadrant 1, so this is one of my angles, and the other one is going to be 360 minus 53 degrees, which is going to give me a total of 307 degrees. Okay? So, my two answers are x is equal to 53 degrees, and 307 degrees. All right? So for class example number one, we're going to use the graphical approach to solve this equation here. Now there's two ways of solving this graphically. The first way is just to graph it and find the x-intercepts to just graph cos of x minus 0 0.75. And the second way is to move this 0 0.75 there and make two equations and so graph one and y1 and y2. I'll show you how we do that. So first I'm going to start off here. We know this is in radians so I'm going to convert my calculator make sure I'm in my radian mode. So my question is in radians. Okay? So there we go. We're in radians. Now I look at this here we already know my amplitude is 1 and we are shifted 0 0.75 units down and it's a cosine so starting at a max so my graph is going to look something like this, okay, if I was to graph it. And I'm going to just punch that into my calculator to double check. We're going to have cos x, 
cos x, and we want to minus 0.75. And I'm going to now play with my window here a bit. Since we're in radians, I'm going to put my x min at 0, because we only want one full revolution. And here I'm going to go to 2 pi. Okay? My scale, I'm actually going to go pi divided by 2, so every, so every 90 degrees. And my min is going to be, well, negative 3, we could say. And my max is only going to be 2, because we shifted down a bit there. So I look at my graph, and it looks like that. Okay? So we're saying we want to solve this when it's equal to 0. When it's equal to 0, those are my y-intercepts. So I'm going to go calculate here, and we want to calculate my zeros. And I'm going to go over. First find my first zero. Go over here. And it's around. Left bound is there. Right. So go below. And enter. So I end up getting 0 0.5. Uh, 7, 2. Okay, so we have x is equal to 0 0.72 for one intercept. Now I have to find my other intercept. So I'm going to go, second calculate, and we want my zeros again. So I have to go all over here. So we want left bound, which is approximately right here. And then we're going to go right. So anywhere right of the graph, which is around there, and I want my 0, which is there. So I get 5.56 is my other one. So now here, we have no range. It's more than one cycle. We want all the cycles. So I want to put this in as x is equal to, we're going to have 0 0.72 plus n, uh, 2 n pi. Oops, and pi. Or we could say n to pi, something like that. Now, and then we also want, we have another situation where we have 5.56 plus 2 n, so some integer of pi. Okay? And we're going to look, because it always goes by pi's for each cycle, so we're going to look here where n is an element of integers. Okay? So some integer of n. Okay? Now, the second method of doing this, it'll give us the same answers, is I'm just going to go here and go to my y equals. And it is to delete, just delete that there, and put 0.75 into graph two of them. So basically what I do here is I move this 0.75 over there, so I have, we know cos of x is equal to 0.75. So we're going cos of x is equal to 0.75, and I'm going to graph this one like this. Okay? So, Basically, we have cos of x, so I'm just going to graph here cos of x, which looks like this. Okay, And we want to know when it's equal to 0.75, which is going to be there and there. So we're going to find now the intercept of these two graphs, the intersection. So we go like there, and I want to find my intersects. So I'm just going to do one of them here, just to show you they're the same. So if I was to do this one here, we end up going... Uh, first curve is approximately there, second curve is there, I have my guess, and I get 5.56, which is the same as what we got there. So it gives you the same answer, and we would end up putting this here, because this graph really goes forever on like that, and we have many more intercepts there, and forever like that, and we have many more intercepts in the negative, okay? So now let's take a look at classroom example number two. In this example, we are going to use a algebraic approach to solve the general solution. So like we said before, our general solution is always when we're finding all possible solutions. So this here would be my general solution. Okay, So it's always when we're plusing pi or plusing 360 to our equation, or in some cases when it's tan, we're plusing 180 or just pi. So here are, we have a few steps. So, so the first step is to solve the equation where the domain is one period. And then the second step is to find the multiples of periods in the solution. Okay? So let's take a look at the first classroom example here to see how to do this. So the first step is to solve my equation. So I have 2 cos 
sine of x minus root 3 is equal to 0. So I'm going to just try and isolate cos of x here, cosine x. So I get 2 cos x is equal to root 3. Then I'm going to get cos x is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay? So let's think of my reference angle here. My reference angle, it's going to be positive. So positive cos is here and there. Okay? Now, if I look at 3 over 2, that's my biggest x. So my biggest x at 3 over 2 is going to be 30 degrees. So it's an x is the biggest, so it's going to be 30 degrees. So that's, and we wanted this in radians. So that's the same thing as pi over 6. So I have pi over 6 is 1. So my reference is, so for one period, I have pi over 6 as 1. And my other one is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 6, which is the same thing as pi over, uh, sorry, 11 pi over 6, okay? So those are my two answers. Now, what I want to do is we have to find all the possible solutions. So in this case, we're going to have x is equal to pi over 6 plus... 2 pi n, okay? And then we also have 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of all integers, okay? Because if we look at we could always add and subtract however many 2 pi's we are. That's why n is going to be an integer, because it's cyclic. Now let's take a look at classroom example number 3. It says, in some cases, the different parts of a general solution can be combined together in one. Determine the general solution for this one here. So if I look at this first thing I want to do is figure out where sine 0 is. So sine 0 means I have 0y. So that's going to be on my x-axis here. Okay? So it's kind of in quadrant right here and right here. Okay? Now, if I look at that, so I know sine x is equal to 0. But it's also equal to pi. And we also have here um, pi, 2 pi. Okay? So we have x could be equal to pi, 0, pi, or 2 pi. So that's going to be the same as 0 plus 2 pi, or 0 plus 2 pi n. And then we have pi plus 2 pi n, and then we're going to have 2 pi plus 2 pi n. Now, I look at this, this could be simplified a lot better than that, can't it? I, if in reality here, we could combine these together, so this is 0, so I have pi plus 2 pi, and then 2 pi plus 2 pi, so really my solution is really just, whoops, this is n is an element of integers, so really in this case, my solution is just going to be x is equal to n pi, okay? And that's it, where n is an element of integers, okay? So now let's take a look at my last example. We're going to look at class example number four. Okay, so for question number four, we want to solve the following equations within the specific domain. So I'm going to start off solving the same way as we always did. So I'm going to isolate for sine x here. So I get sine, 2 sine x is equal to root 2. Now that's the same thing as sine x is equal to root 2 all over 2. Okay? Well, I'm going to use my little trig circle here to figure out which quadrants these are in. Well, where sine is positive is going to be there and there. So quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Now looking at that here, we also know my reference angle for x is equal to, is going to be 45 degrees, okay? So my reference angle is 45 degrees, and that means my actual angles is going to be 45 and 135, okay? But that's our very basic. So I look at this, we're starting at 360, and this is 540. So I want to go all the way around once, okay? So I'm going to add 360 to 45, which will end up giving me, for my angles, x is equal to 
405, and then I have to add 360 to 135, which will end up giving me plus uh, 360 to 135 is going to give me 495. And so, oops, those aren't being added. These are my two solutions within that specific domain. Okay? So let's take a look at cotangent now. So now, remember, my periods for cotangent is the same as tan, which is only going to be pi. So I'm going to look at this here, and we're going to try and solve this out. First step is always isolate and see where we are. So I'm going to have root 3 cotangent of x is equal to negative 1. So I have cotangent of x is equal to negative 1 over root 3 which is the same thing as saying, because it's the reciprocal of tan, tan of x is equal to negative root 3. So which quadrants are these going to be in when we're saying tan is negative? Okay, so that means they both must be different. So in this case here, we're in quadrant 2, and we're going to be in quadrant 4. Okay, we follow our cast. Now, what angle is this? This is going to be the same thing as angle, oh, we want in terms of pi, so first of all it's in radians. So for tan, that's going to be the same as uh, we want tan is y over x, so it's going to be, if I went here for my reference, my y must be my big one, so that's going to be the same as 60 degrees, so 60 degrees there, which is the same thing as pi over 3. So we know that's pi over 3, and we want between 0 and negative pi. So in that case, we're going to have to go this way. So we are going to be actually negative pi over 3 is one answer. And then we want to keep on going uh, all the way to negative pi. Because oh, remember, that's one period. So really, my answer is just going to be negative pi over 3 which will be my only answer for this one because the period of tan is just actually every pi. So negative pi over 3 is going to be my sole solution.